Hello all. In this video, we will see about resective osseous surgery. First of all, for introduction, for beginners, periodontitis is a disease which in simple clinical terms is characterized by deep pockets and bone loss. Clinically, you could diagnose it with pockets and radiographically, you could see it with bone loss. In case of bone loss, it can be either horizontal or vertical bone loss in broader terms. To know more about bone loss, refer to our video on types of bone loss and bone defects. In this video, we will see about one of the treatment modalities for bone loss that is resective osseous surgery. So to introduce osseous surgery to you, you should remember it as a procedure by which changes in the alveolar bone is accomplished to get rid of the deformities. There are many types of deformities as said in the previous video on bone loss. It is induced by periodontal disease or either by other factors such as exhaust osseous. The osseous surgery can either be additive or subtractive. For example, you have a vertical defect. You can either add bone graft here resulting in additive osseous surgery that is regenerative procedure or you could go for resection. So in what cases we go for a resection and why do we go for resection that is removal of bone. The resection is aimed at whenever the regeneration is not possible procedure which is directed at restoring it to the original level is termed as regeneration in this video we will see about the subtractive osseous surgery procedure or the resective osseous surgery procedure what is the rationale for doing this procedure it is the most predictable pocket reduction technique you have to remember that bone dictates the form of gingiva and determines much of the residual pocket depth. If you do curettage and if you remove all the debris and calculus present here, even after your surgery, if you did not correct the bone defect present, your gingiva will form pocket again. Your periodontium will have pockets again because the bone determines the the bone defect determines the form of gingiva. Therefore, the defects need to be corrected. Either you have to go for regeneration or resection. It should not be a defect to avoid the repetition of pockets, reoccurrence of pockets. Therefore, resective osseous surgery is known as the most predictable pocket reduction technique. Ultimately, the aim of surgery is pocket reduction, but performed at the expense of bone and the attachment level it is performed at the expense of bone especially resective surgery and it is based on the tenet that discrepancies in the level and shape of the bone and gingiva predispose patients to the recurrence of pocket as said earlier the goal of the osseous resective therapy is to reshape the marginal bone to resemble the alveolar process undamaged by the periodontal disease procedure is combined with apically repositioned flap the flap is repositioned apically to the bone level after surgery so that pocket will not recur and the maintenance of width of the attached gingiva is facilitated by apically repositioned flap if it is too complicated for you let me simple simplify it for you the normal architecture of bone is like this that is as you could see here this interdental bone is at a higher level than the radicular bone this type of architecture is normal and positive architecture as you could see here, the position of the bony margin mimics the contour of cemento enamel junction. In molar region, there is less scalloping than um, uh, the anterior teeth. Now, we have seen what is a normal architecture or a positive architecture. Now, what is a negative architecture? If the interdental bone is apical to the radicular bone, it is negative architecture as you could see in this picture. The interdental bone is more apical when compared to the radicular bone. And flat architecture is the reduction of the interdental bone and the radicular bone to the same level like this. Now you should know about certain terminologies. 
before moving into a surgery osteoplasty the word plasty will refer to the reshaping the bone without removing tooth supporting bone whereas ectomy that is osteotomy it will uh, it denote the removal of tooth supporting bone plasty is reshaping and ectomy osteotomy is removal definitive osseous reshaping is that uh, you have done maximum and you cannot do more than the reduction what you have done whereas compromise osseous reshaping means you have left some chance that is if you go for definitive osseous reshaping there may be a drastic compromise in the stability of the tooth therefore you go you go for for example flat architecture where you cannot aim for positive architecture in order to retain the tooth therefore um, indicates a bone pattern that cannot be improved without significant osseous removal that would be detrimental to the overall result so you go for a compromise in the osseous reduction how to select a case for resective osseous surgery since it is a procedure which has a negative impact on the overall outcome uh, you you are going for an irreversible procedure so you should know how to select a case before going for resective osseous surgery it is applied to patients with early to moderate bone loss 2 to 3 mm with moderate um, root length and a trunk length uh, that have bone defects with one or two walls uh three wall defect will definitely go for a regenerative procedure and one or two walls hemiseptal defects go for resection and advanced attachment loss are not candidates for resective procedure uh two wall defects craters are the most common bony defects found in patients with periodontitis and they will go for resective osseous surgery usually other than the periodontitis situations the restorative procedures and aesthetic crown lengthening will also use osteo uh, resective osseous surgery where you have to maintain the biological width etc we'll see about those things in a separate video